Today in the news we've got some fine AMD wine, a foldable delay and a smooth display. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. It looks like the Vega GPUs are still aging very gracefully. In fact, in the newly released Left 4 Dead style game, World War Z, the Vega 64 manages to outperform a 2080 Ti at 1080p, match its performance at 1440p, and at 4K it loses, but only by around 4 FPS. This is truly impressive coming from a card that is, first of all, way older, and around a third of the price of a 2080 Ti. Even lower end cards cards from AMD are putting a fight with the RX 580, trading blows with the RTX 2070, and consistently beating the RTX 2060. Now I know, this is only one game and the results are definitely due to the use of Vulkan, and as we know, Vulkan isn't all that common in AAA PC titles these days, but we might see more and more as PlayStation titles jump to the PC. The PS4 uses a modified version of Vulkan for most, if not all of its game, and as we saw a few weeks ago, some of those titles are jumping into PC with Vulkan support. Notably, Detroit Become Human has been confirmed to use the API, and I wouldn't be surprised if Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain would use it too. It's just a shame that brand new games aren't coming out with full Vulkan support that often. I guess we'll have to wait until the end of May with the release of Detroit Become Human to see if Vulkan is truly a miracle worker for AMD GPUs, or if this was just a one-off. Next up, but sticking with AMD, last week we found out that AMD was releasing a special version of the Ryzen 7 2700X for the company's 50th anniversary. We didn't have the specs, but we knew it was coming. Well, Connection.com has listed the chip, but this time a few of the specs appeared for the first time. According to the listing, the chip will have the same base and boost clock as the original, making this special edition, well, not so special. The packaging and the heat spreader might be the only thing that will make this chip different. Different. I'm not really surprised, honestly. I mean, Zen or Zen Plus have never really been great overclockers, so I doubt they would have been able to squeeze more juice out of that chip. At least the price listed is only $20 more compared to the original 2700X. Moving on now with Samsung, it looks like their Galaxy Fold snafu last week was enough to make them postpone the release of the foldable smartphone. There are no specific dates for the new release, but Samsung plans to announce it in the coming weeks. At least if you have pre-ordered the device, your place on the queue is still guaranteed. That's if you keep your pre-order. I mean, they probably manufactured tens of thousands of these phones already since the release was for this Friday, but Samsung still says that they will take measures to reinforce the display protection, which means that the Fold probably won't come out for a couple of months since they have to, you know, fix the display. All the problems actually seem to stem from the top and bottom fold areas where the screen and the protector separate. So I'm curious to see how they're actually going to fix that. Will they change the whole design or are they just going to try and protect the separation? Moving on to another smartphone manufacturer, this week OnePlus is supposed to unveil the rumored OnePlus 7. Apparently this new phone will have all new display technology. They invested significantly into it, and apparently their displays cost three times as much as on other flagship phones. I'm not sure if that's something to brag about. The only thing that we can sort of guess from all of that talk is that the new display will probably have a higher refresh rate. On a Twitter post last week, Pete Lau, the founder and CEO at OnePlus, tease the phone as fast and smooth. I'm honestly quite excited about it since, uh, you know, my current phone is the OnePlus and it's my first Android experience in the last 11 years. Yes, I was completely iPhone and I just switched. I just hope that their underscreen fingerprint reader gets a speed boost because that one is slow as hell. Then in gaming, it looks like Apex Legend has had quite a steep drop in viewership on Twitch. In mid-February, the game reached its peak of 40 million hours watched in a single week, to now a little more than 10 million. On the other hand though, Fortnite has had just a steady viewership of around 20 million all along. Now clearly, that doesn't mean that the game is failing, but it's quite the hit for Respawn considering this game was seen as a real contender to overtake Fortnite. At least, Apex has a chance of making waves in viewership thanks to the legend releases and possible events. Personally, I haven't played it in a while, mostly because I get bored of maps in Battle Royale games quickly. What about you guys? Have any of you quit Apex already? Let me know down below. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have any questions and or you want my opinion on the subject, you can leave it down below with the hashtag boot sequence. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. I tried to grab my phone there, it didn't work. Stay frosty and I'll see you guys on the next one.